Hey guys, I uh, want to make a video. Uh, market's crazy, getting some crazy moves. Uh, this is uh, mid-April 2023 if you're watching this way in the future. Um, I really want to make this because uh, shorts are getting really squeezed, really, really squeezed in this environment. And it's because they're trying to apply very weak market morning short patterns to crazy Momo. Um, and I just want to talk about uh, some short strategies you could use that doesn't rely on you knowing where the top is, guessing where the top is, shorting into extension, you know, averaging up, all that type of thing. Um, this is very common in, in highly liquid, strong stocks, okay? Um, what you need to know about this environment is the volume's very, a lot of volume, a lot of liquidity, okay? Uh, you can make big moves, like I have PTPI up here, okay? Um, it's it's very easy to try to guess tops. Uh, I'm not a big fan of guessing tops in general. I'm a big fan of uh, long traps. I want to see price action that should be bullish, that's near the top, that isn't bullish, and then shorting into it. Um, but in this type of environment, you often have to be very patient, okay? So, uh, PTPI, we're going to talk about pretty much what this video is about. We're going to be talking about how to, like... Um, how to short backside? How do you? How do you? What's a, what's a good indication that backside could be in, and that you get these um, you get these deep pulls, especially in the afternoon. These like deep, deep fades. Uh, once once the Momo's gone, right? Like how how can you tell? Like how how can you have some indication that something like this might be about to about to happen? Okay, so so PCPI crazy squeeze. Uh, thing you need to know about uh. Big momentum, like things just pushing, pushing, pushing. High day clear outs or bad shorts. You do not want to take high day clear outs almost ever. Like almost, there's like some very rare situations that might be okay, but high day clear outs, crazy Momo, tons of strength, awful pattern. High day clear outs is a weak market pattern. It is not, high day clear outs are, are signals. For example, right here, this is a two cent high day clear out on PTPI, right? This candle right here. Heidi clear out took out a hundred k bid. Market ordered a dollar in, in in seventy cents in like maybe like like a minute and a half. <laughs> like right, like okay, Heidi clear outs are strong. You go long on Heidi clear outs, okay. Um, so like okay, then what's a good short? All right, so pretty much what you do, you wait for a big push, and you got you have to be very patient with this. Many short sellers are not good at shorting in the afternoon not they're not good at shorting in the middle of the day and that's because you have to have a very good read on chart painting you have to have a very good read on how backside liquidity works what levels you need to look at what type of price action you're waiting for there's a lot of there's a lot of very complicated factors that comes into shorting strong momo uh big big parabolic stocks in the middle of the day and expecting you know catching you know this once this high came in right here, 7.9 all the way to 4.4, uh, right? Uh, catching that fade, okay? Um, so very simple, big push. You don't short any of this. You literally just don't press any of your buttons, okay? You press none of your buttons, <laughs> okay? It pulls back. And what you need to know about the pullback is that there's always going to be shorts chasing into the pullback. And there's going to be longs trying to buy the dip because... Either uh, they're feeling FOMO because they missed this move, or maybe they made money on this move and they just think, you know, this is just another short trap and it's going to refresh on. See, it's, it was right into five minute nine, five minute nine. It's going to refresh on the five minute nine and it's going to keep going. You know, I mean, it's 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 they're they're uh, moving average traders and they're just they're waiting for the pullback, the long into the pullback to, to keep going higher, right? Um, so what you need to know is that the more shorts that load into the backside because now they're feeling FOMO, right? Maybe they got squeeze going up and now they see big crack, big crack. They're thinking, oh man, backside's in. Let me short these. Um, let me short these pops. Let me short these lower highs. More and more shorts loading in and more and more longs getting shaken out. They're going long here, getting shaken out, going long. Look at this manipulated candle. Clear out, big green candle. You know how many longs are trying to get in this? They think, look at that, clear out, Big green candle. I think it's going to the same pattern. They think the same thing's going to happen. I shorted this. 
it hit a wall at seven dollars i'm like oh they're just faking out longs here and i just shorted into these candles and it rolled over a whole you know, straight down one dollar extremely stress-free trade i just one dollar you get you short you know five ten thousand shares rolls over one dollar and you're in the green the whole time you know what i mean um anyway uh the point is, the more that shorts load into a stock, and the more that longs get shaken out, the stronger a stock is, okay? The more shorts and less longs, the stronger a stock is, okay? And that's how manipulation works, right? If, if every long is getting shaken out, it's very deliberate. Look how deliberate these support swipes. Reclaim, support swipe, reclaim, support swipe. Big support, actually, higher low, big initiation, right? These are all long traps. Um... Before they get shaken out, you know, as, unless they bought the very bottom, which uh, trust me, they're not, they're not doing. They're buying on the push and again shaken out on these pullbacks, right? So, um, it's manipulation, right? So when I say more shorts, less longs, I'm talking about retail. The more retail shorts and the less retail longs, the stronger something is because somebody's soaking these shares. Okay, so because there's so much liquidity in the stock. Uh, it's very easy to abuse that liquidity, right? Like, okay, um, if a stock gets manipulated all the way up here and starts pulling back, well, let's squeeze some of these backside shorts because, you know, backside shorts in this situation are usually not, you know, shorting down here and risking high day. They're shorting, they're shorting the previous lower highs. It makes sense to short previous lower highs, right? And longs who are looking to get in, are looking for the, these ranges to get broken, right? They're looking for rotation, and they're, they're trying to long the rotation, right? Most logs are not big brain longing down in, in the 5.5s, right? They're waiting for the big volume push here or here or here, and they're longing above 6.5, above 7. They're longing up here, man. So this is where they're at. This is where retail long averages are. Unless you're really smart and you know what you're doing, you're not getting it down here, okay? So, very simple. So midday... There's less liquidity. There's less action. It takes longer, you know, morning, morning Momo stuff going straight up. It's very easy to set a trap, push, set a trap, push, set a yeah, trap, push, trap, push. But middle of the day, it starts slowing down. There's less participation. Um, uh, so, and, you know, you already did your big Momo move, the big up only move. So it's going to take time. You have to, you have to, if you're rigging the stock, you have to paint a chart. So. When we're looking at chart painting, what are we l really looking at on the backside? We're looking to see uh, lower highs, right? What are the lower highs? Is one at eight, seven point four seven, which is right under seven point five key level, seven point two, six point nines, very clean lower highs, very clean. Now, just because it's lower highs doesn't mean a big insane nasty squeeze is coming to you know ten twelve dollars, right? That's not what it means. Um, it but it does mean that that Shorts are risking this level, and longs are going to be looking to get in, okay? So the way backside you know, manipulation works is you get a pullback, you know, just lower, lower, low, lower, low, lower, low. More and more shorts are in the money. More and more longs are getting shaken out, and then suddenly the soak starts, right? Usually, so one of my requirements for this type of pattern is that's to pull back a decent amount, like 15 20% from the highs, right? Highs are 8.5. You know, if this was hovering in the 7.5s like if this was hovering up here that's still the, it's still in the top of its range um is there's no clear indication that backside is in um i'm talking about big push with a pretty big pullback right so we're, we're decent right at 5.5 we're decently far away from high day right and way i have to understand is it's it's a the big move already happened there's a bunch of bagged longs who got in too late um and a stock can only go so high, right? You get black, do you get black, black swan squeezes every once in a while? Sure, sure. Anything can happen, but most of the time, um, especially uh, on on uh, Thursday when CXAI, you understand this chart looks just like CXAI. Big push, soak above VWAP, big rotation, right? Everyone saw what CXAI did. Everyone's expecting PTPI to do the same thing. It's even more, you know, it, it's it's pattern replication, but it's the next day. It's tricking people into thinking a big move's going to come. Oh, big move happened yesterday? Surely the same big move's going to happen today. Uh, market makers will just abuse that thinking to dump their stock, right? Um, but market's strong, so you have to wait, okay? So, believe it or not, I will short these moves. 
I will short these moves, but I scalp them. I scalp them because I expect backside manipulation to happen, right? So if I see moves like this clear out or this fake soak that rolls over, I'll short, I'll short these, but I'm taking, and it, which is the market's so nuts, is I'm taking these small moves, but these small moves are still like 15% moves. <laughs> like there's so much money to be made even on scalps, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, uh, but you have to, I know that these lower highs, these levels are just being painted, paint, paint, paint. And I'm waiting for the rotation, okay? So this is very similar to my aggressive push long trap video where um, you have painted backside lower highs and what they're looking to do is they're looking to squeeze those lower highs but not push all the way to high day. Pretty much because it's too far back and it already did its big Momo move, right? Um, and it's just, especially with CXAI doing it the day before, the odds of it just do it again now, so low, okay? So, um, in, in a, you know, I, I post less on Twitter nowadays, mostly because I'm hanging out in a private trading Discord with some friends, and I just try to post some interesting things on Twitter when I see it. Um, but yeah, I mostly keep it in there, and you know, I was just telling people, I was just like, yo, these lower highs are just cl clean paint. Like, look at this. Big push, pull back. Push, pull back. Clear out, pull back. It's like, uh, the soak in, in, in the low highs are just painted, painted, painted. And what you need to know about manipulated tickers, man, manipulated tickers will never just lower high straight down, right? Especially when there's this much volume, this much Momo, this much strength in the market. It's so easy to abuse the backside liquidity before you get your real dump. So, like, the way a lot of strong stocks work is you get... And you've probably seen other people talk about this for good reason. Big push, pull back, second push, clears out the lower highs, and then the real pullback. And what's nice about this, what's nice about knowing how to read the lower highs and, and, and understanding what levels they could be going for, um, this fade, once you wait for the backside squeeze, this fade is so painless. Look how painless this is. Like, like... So I'll tell you what levels are short and what, what my entries are and what I'm reading on this. Um, but like this, you short up here in this structure, um, right? Uh, preferably in the top half of it. And then you're in the money almost the entire way. Uh, the bid prop, which we'll talk about bid props on these types of patterns, um, which is here, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. That cracks. And then most of the time, the, the, the backside is in. And then you get, you know, your two thirty, three o'clock fades, and it's straight down. It's just like, it's easy, easy. It's, it's so painless, so easy. You could just AFK, you know, you set your risk. You know, it, you know, it might get manipulated back up. We'll see examples of that, actually, where it actually gets manipulated back up. But most of the time, in these patterns, it just fades to the, to the close, right? And you don't need to guess the tops. You don't need to short these pops. You don't need to short high days. Um... You just wait for the manipulated backside to squeeze, and then you short it. Okay, so right, I'm I'm seeing the soak key level 5.5, 5.5, 5.5. minute two hundreds catching up. Uh, fifteen minute nine, another midday MA is catching up. Right, um, the three minute fifties, you know, the, the MAs are catching up and they're and they're looking to initiate off it. Right, there's usually some type of support MA they're looking to initiate off of. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, I know at the very least they have this 7.47, 7.5 level. They'll squeeze that. And then I saw the 8 level. I'm like, well, you never know. You never know how much liquidity is in a stock. So when they're initiating this backside squeeze, you never know. Are they going to break 8? Are they only going to break 7.5? Like, where do I want to start loading into my short? And when I saw this candle, this green candle, I was like, and I saw it hit 7.9, I was like, oh, I'll wait for a pullback. And see if it breaks eight because I don't want to rush in a little too early. Maybe they break eight, push it to eight point ones, and you know everyone thinks it's going to break eight point five two. Then then they pull it right. So I, I was eight dollar biased on this. Um, but what happened was they pulled it and then it cracked one dollar. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, they probably don't have the. But I know for a fact that this candle's not just going to go straight down like this. Um, they're going to bounce it. So I'm like, oh, I guess you know it could not have the liquidity to get there like the fact that they pulled this this hard and now they're doing the bid prop higher low higher low higher low um you know they, they i'm now i'm not thinking eight now i'm thinking like okay what levels 
do longs want to get in? Like, what's, like, a clear rotation level that, like, I know a long would want to get in, that would be a good place to short, right? Um, so I see the bounce. They push it to 7.44, which is right under 7.5. I'm like, oh, cool. They kind of pulled it under 7.5. Let me wait for the pullback. Let me wait for the bounce. And if it breaks 7.5, I'll short it. I'll insta-short it. So I was watching it. They grind it up, grind it up, grind it up. 7.5, broke it. A bunch of buying came in, teleported from 7.9 to 7.6, insta-shorted it. The, the market order shorted it the moment this candle broke. I was like, oh, a long will just think that's up only 7.5 break, which is squeeze. So it's like, let me, like, with 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 the theory being, okay, they squeeze the backside shorts. Eight dollars is probably not going to happen. They kind of they kind of deep pulled it already. Um, uh, let me just short into the, the first key level break. So 7.5 made sense, and I had a 7.55 average, right? Um, but I know it often takes time for this crack to happen. But I have a good average now. Now, you know, I can have my risk somewhere in the 7.8s. And, uh, you know, I take a partial on the 7 crack in case, you know, this rotates into a big squeeze. At least I took, it's seven, seven, because my average is 7.55, my first partial was at 6.8s. It's 10%. <laughs> it's almost 10%. Um, but now I'm seeing, the, like, I'm seeing these bounces, but again, 7.5 break fail 7.5 break fail and then what they did was really interesting they put 15,000 shares at 7.4 and i'm seeing the higher low higher low i'm seeing these higher lows i'm like oh, okay this is a classic you'll see um bid propping before the pull is common i have it right here um they paint the higher lows because uh, longs will risk these higher lows on the way up expecting it to push right um and then they did another classic bearish level two signal which is they put a big ask 7.4, so you get the 7.4 flat top, right? They pull it back, they eat through the 15,000 shares. It hovers above it for maybe like five, 10 seconds. Insta pool, next candle, dump, dump. Roll over, dump. And now we're in, now I'm convinced we're in backside. Uh, the odds of this being soaked and rotated are low, especially since this is uh, playing off of the theory that this is, Everyone thinks this CXAI is going to happen all over again, even though it's it's not. The odds are so low. Um, and it, look, it even does these like backside high volume squeezes, down, squeeze, down, just like these manipulated little little. Oh man, it's going to bounce off support and squeeze. No, just just manipulated backside bullshit. Like it's manipulated way up, it's manipulated on the way down. That's how it works. All right. So big push. You wait for the pullback. You wait for the lower highs. You wait for those lower highs to get broken. You look at key levels, you try to decide, okay, what key levels are you going to go for, right? In this case, I, I was aiming too, too high. Um, big brain would have been shorting into the top of this candle. That, that's getting a 780s average is super big brain, but I was uh, not thinking to do that. I thought 8 was a possibility. And then, um, and then yeah, these 7.5, 7. .5, 7 .5, they just keep, they just keep, everyone keeps buying into the 7.5 break and they just keep selling. They're just selling and those selling, selling, selling. Get a bearish level 2 signal. You pull 10 a day. Made like 30% on this trade. Um, and not only that, I, I took minimal losses on the way up. And actually, I hit this long down here. Um, sadly, I took all my profits <laughs> on this candle. <laughs> but uh, we'll look at more examples of this. Um, GFAI from the, the first day it ran. All right. 1 million float. GFAI. Okay. Crazy 1 million float stock. Okay. Big push. Squeezes a bunch of people. Pull back, lower high, lower high, lower high. <laughs> soak on VWAP, soak on VWAP, soak on VWAP. Uh, 15 minute MA, catching up, right? Five minute MAs, catching up. They're all catching up. Three minute, three minute 50. Very clean, <laughs> okay? Um, MA is catching up, soaking, soaking, soaking. But this is a big pullback, right? So what I said, pull back 15 to 20%. This pulled back from uh eighteen dollars to uh thirteen point fives, right? But it's still it's still above VWAP, right? Um it's still in the you know top part of its range, but it, it's a decent enough pullback where it's gonna be really hard to generate the amount of money to squeeze high day. Now we're gonna look at um some classic minip on this, right? So what am I looking at? Besides high a day, all the lower highs are at 
16.82 or lower. That means every short, unless you got in, sh yeah, but you always have to think, where are the shorts positioned, man? Where are they positioned? Okay, it's important to know where the shorts are and where the longs are, right? Very important. Um, and on backside manipulation, you want to, that's why you want to read the lower highs, because you got to understand that, like, most shorts are not, they didn't short the top of this green candle or the top of this red candle, right? Like, they, they're shorting down here. They're shorting the pullback. They're shorting these lower highs. And they're risking these lower highs because that risk is too big, right? Um, so you get a big pullback, a lot of shorts chasing, big manipulated push, just like we saw in PTPI. Four green candles. You get, they get to the point that they want. They unload. Another lower high. They get to the level they want. They unload, right? Soak. They're soaking on, on the level they want, right? And then eventually they do their big initiation. Look at this. Like, look at the volume pickup. This is class. We saw this on PTPI. Let me go back to really that. This is how you know, like the um, like the the backside squeeze is coming, because you start getting, like, your first decent green candle, but then it starts increasing, increasing. Little fake pullback at seven, big increase. Like you're just getting they're they're, they're initiating the backside squeeze, right? So. That consistent or increasing volumes of, is, 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 especially after it's been soaking for, if you see it says right here, um, uh, midday soak often lasts one to three hours. So once you get past like the one hour mark, especially one and a half, two hours, um, and you see constant soaking at support, you want to see this backside initiation happen where it's just like consistent volume. And look at this, like, um, What's interesting about this pattern is that the more aggressive, again, back to the aggressive push long trap, the more aggressive this pushes, the, the higher odds short it becomes. PTPI was the same way. Okay. The initiation was like, look at that. Green, 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 fake seven pullback, big, so aggressive. One minute nine, super aggressive, increase the odds. The, the, the more aggressive the backside short squeeze initiation is, the more um, the better of a short is, right? So you don't want to be shorting these unless you're scalping. You don't want to be shorting these plays. Um, if you're going for the big move, you're, you're just waiting for all the backside shorts to get squeezed, all the longs to get in. And like I said, in, that, in this case, the more longs and less shorts, the weaker a stock is, right? All these backside shorts can squeeze. And you, you got to understand, most, most short sellers are afraid to, to short up here or up here or up here because they think... You know the big, the big black swan. You know, crazy, crazy squeeze is gonna come. They they were shorting these lower highs on the way down, and they just got stopped out. And now they're getting stopped out on what is the move? Like this is the like this is not it. Again, if you're scalping, it's fine, but this is the move. Like this, this is the structure you're waiting for. Okay, back to GFAI because I, I do want to show this because it shows what could happen, even if even if the pattern confirms itself, right? Okay, 16.82, this lower high. Again, a bunch of my training friends, I'm like, key level, key level, key level, up only initiation. They faked the 16.5 resistance. I was like, oh, I, I know that's going to squeeze 16.5 for sure. And look at this. Bid propping is common. Higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low, straight higher lows. All these longs, long in this back set are in the money. That's why it's a long trap. Because they're all in the money. <laughs> okay. It breaks it. I thought it was going for 17. But once I saw it hit 16.9 and instantly pull back into the 16.7s, I shorted. So I had a 16.75 average on this. And what happens? And what's great about long traps is if you short them, there's almost, n once they break their key levels, there's almost no continuation. There's either a hidden seller um, shows up or the, or the volume just, it makes its big push. And the volume disappears, man. The volume uh, just starts, it's like the one minute candle volume starts getting like half of what it was, one third of what it pulls back. It gets thinner, thinner, thinner. That's, that's, it's great confirmation that, that, a, that a, um, a big crack's coming. And sometimes a big crack comes right away. So, again, waited, saw the paint, saw the lower high, saw the soak, waited for the squeeze, got over the level I wanted, insta shorted it, big crack. Low volume, low volume, low volume, big crack. Um, that's why I always say one minute two hundred is really strong. I, I always take profits down here because of how manipulated stuff is. And on sub one million full stocks, sometimes 
they soak, and then what I call the real long happens, right? This is the long everyone wants to get in on for high day. They shake out those people, do the real long. You never know. I was holding for a deep fade here. Um, but the moment it rotated um, here, uh, back above 16s and started pushing 16.5, I actually just got out. I, I got out. On, I, I didn't flip long because I wasn't big brain enough to do it, but um, I knew that this is exactly what, and we'll see other examples. Um, OCEA back in March, another example. Remember my tweet where I said long patterns at the top that don't work are the best shorts? Look at this flag. Flag. Initiation. Look at this. High day right here is 9.77. Pushes 9.68. Right? Comes within 1% of breaking it. I insta shorted this. <laughs> what, you have to know, what you have to know about manipulated stocks is, and this is why it's important to study long patterns. You have to know what long patterns longs thinks, what, what retail longs think is good. All right, the cleaner the long pattern is at the top, the more bearish it is, <laughs> okay? If it's a pattern that retail can easily see and understand, um, uh, on, and, and this is very contextual. So on like manipulated stuff like this, where look at this, hide, hide a clear out, what classic 1 million flow stuff. Hide a clear out, soak, hide a clear out, soak. Looks like clean flag, clean or wedge, pennant, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. I don't care. The point is, long as it going long in this candle because it's initiation over this range. See this range? See this, see this, see this triangle right here? Um, that's a clean pattern. Long as you're going to want to hit this. And that's why, you know, what the? I didn't mean to do that. That's why this volume. Look at this volume. This is long as getting in, man. They're getting in. I'm getting in. And then what happens? They get in. It hits the level they want. Hidden seller or the buying just disappears, and you just start seeing it pull back and losing value, man. And I and I just uh, I, I had a 9.6 average on this, and look at that. Instead, this is the trap, man. If you see candles like this on the low floats, you have to understand this was orchestrated. It's orchestrated, man. But again, classic example. Of, I thought, oh man, I nailed this. This is gonna like deep fade to six, just like GFAI, another some one million float stock. This is a possibility. And this is the same soak, same rotation, and it's the real long. This is the real long. Um, but let's look at some more examples. MRAI, yesterday, April 14th. I just want to show this. Okay, big push, up halt, big push. Um, I actually shorted this. This is really funny. They did a $3 clear out. They pulled out. They squeezed all the people... Um, who try to get either either uh, the shorts who try to short this, so now they're getting squeezed and they're freaking out because they you know they think it's going to squeeze again, and the longs who think this is like super bullish, right? Because obviously it looks super bullish, um, but it stalled at 920s. I'm like, if it comes back down to the 910s on this candle, I'll short it, and I shorted it, it just went straight down. But the point of this video is not that. Clear out, push the real short, right? Um, is this? Now this didn't take, this took almost an hour, so this wasn't nearly as long, but the point of this is that uh, it's soaking, soaking. You never want to short down here unless you're scalping. You never want to short down here. You never want to short down here unless you're going for quick scalp moves, which is fine if you're doing it, but if you're going for big moves, um, unless you're near the top on these strong plays, you're, you're going to want to wait for the backside uh, manipulation, right? So clean lower highs below this 2.84. Soaking on the view app, soaking, and then look how aggressive this is. They pull it, 2.6, they pull it and initiate it straight up 50 cents off support in one candle. Everyone and their mom is going to think this is the strongest thing known to men, okay? So what you need to know about longs is they see this candle, and they see the push that comes after, that came before, and they think, oh man, this is just going to rotate, it's going to soak. And it's gonna it's gonna form a one minute flag. What I call one minute. See this high here, this low here. One minute flag. It's gonna break the flag, and it's gonna go straight up, bro. After candles like this, um, either you could sh you get you could actually wait for the top of this candle and short it, be super big brain, or wait for the pullback, wait for the one minute pattern that longs want to get in on, which is very simple. Here's the flag. 
Here's a flag. Clear 2.9 area, 2.94. I was just looking at 2.9 on this. I was like, if this breaks, if this pulls back and pushes 2.9 on a one-minute flag, I'm going to short into the one-minute flag. So this pulled, came back, popped 2.95, insta-shorted. I had a 2.91 average on this. I, I shorted the moment it broke 2.9s. Because uh, I know after a big aggressive move like this, it's often a long trap. The more aggressive the move is, the more likely a long, especially one where, like, again, 3.4s all the way down to 2.2s. This is like, this is in, in you know, this fits the 20, 15 to 20% pullback sometimes more. Um, usually above UAP, there's an example of the 1 minute 200 being right here. Um, so, you know, there's, there's some variation in how the patterns work, but the idea is the same. You, you do an aggressive move to squeeze the backside of liquidity, and then I wait for a long pattern that I know people want to get in on, and I short it. Short it, and you have to short. You have to anticipate the long pattern, right? You have to understand what it is. You have to understand why longs want to get in on this candle, um, and you want to short at the top, man. You want to get good averages, man. You really, really do. You have to see the long pattern at, at key levels. Um, whether it's near high day or whether it's this this type of thing that's like shorting a backside play and you want to get in you want you don't want to get in down here man you want to get in at the two point nineties um because if your read is correct a lot of times on the bullish candle that's the top see it doesn't push anymore it doesn't push anymore that actually pulled back up they did it again and uh then then did the big pull see so you get the first big pullback the backside manipulation, and then the real pull, like the real pullback. And then they did a bunch of backside manipulative stuff because they did an offering in the after hours. Um, but uh, we'll do one more uh, really fast. Seco. Last one. It's actually in this. Um, um, it's actually in this structure. Big squeeze. And what's interesting about this is they flash huge ask. They had big ask at, at 170 year, and they're pushing it down. Lower high, lower high, deep support swipe, aggressive reclaim, another lower high, and then squeeze the 1.7s, right? And I actually shorted it. I actually shorted straight into the top of this candle at 1.78. Because um, I was like, oh, this is just... Um, and I... And keep in mind, what I'm sure I'm assuming it's not going to break high days. So when I short this, I can have like you know eight cent risk. And look at that. After the backside 1.7 squeeze happens, this is the top. They pull it back. Longs love the longest wedge, which is why the volume comes in here. This is a wedge. They they long it. And then what they did is they flashed quad stack 70k bids. And when you ever see big bids on a potential long trap, and this fits a potential long trap because a lot of the longs want to get in for the high day squeeze after, you know, after the big Momo push already happened. Um, they pushed it, they pulled it back, the bids disappeared, down halt. Um, clean, clean backside liquidity play, okay? So uh, here is uh, pretty much everything I talked about. I hope this helped. It's very similar to my aggressive push long trap, um, but I want to talk about it because the market's really strong, and uh, these are, when there's a lot of liquidity and a lot of shorts chasing after the big move has happened, these are common common patterns, okay? So uh, you gotta be patient. You gotta, you gotta watch the, 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 the chart throughout the day. You have to see what levels are getting painted. You have to be, you know, and you have to wait for the, the backside shorts to get squeezed. And then, and then if you understand long patterns, hey, you, you get short the top of this like I did, or wait for the wedge to happen. The wedge pushes. Um, and it's great when you get a level two signal like this. When you see Quatsack bids on the wedge push, comes back down. They actually pulled the bids. They sold, I think, like five thousand shares into it. Then they pulled it down. Halt, man! Like it's great when you get level like big bids on long traps, or are, are weak, <laughs> um, that are near the top after you know, like, you know, because the stock can only push so high, right? So um, anyway, hope that helps. It's pretty much this an aggressive push long trap, very similar. Um, they're strong market, strong stock type of plays. Uh, don't try to catch tops in 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 this type of market, man. Uh, you don't need to. You don't you don't need to try to guess where this top is. Um, you just wait for the backside, wait for backside shorts to squeeze, and then get in. Then you get this one, two, three, four pattern. All right. Uh, all right. 
So uh, yeah, don't get squeezed and I hope you make some money. Dude, uh, in markets like this, if you're patient and you, you short these, um, it's, it's, it's going to be some of the most painless 30% fades you've ever had. All right. Um, okay. So good luck, guys.